All right, Sister Wives, Season 1, Episode 6, Fourth Wife to Be. Epic. Epic. You guys, can you imagine all my sister wives stands? Can you imagine right now? If, if fast forward to 2024, that the episodes were still 20 minutes long, jam-packed with drama, hate, tension, love, everybody getting along. I mean, would we not be obsessed with Sister Wives 18 times more than we already are? Now, of course, TLC is never, ever, unfortunately, ah! Never going to go back in the in time. Never going to go back to the day where they did 20-minute episodes because let's be honest, it's all about the money. It's all about the cash. And I understand that. I run a business too. Many of you are small business owners, big business owners, and you work for major companies. And unfortunately, and fortunately at times, it's all about the Benjamins. And so they are going to keep these hour shows going and – you know, uh, 14 episodes, 15 episodes, specials because of the ad dollars, right? And we will will continue to tune in to try to, I guess, grasp for one second the joy that was season one we're hoping for. I am obsessed with this show. I'm doing, I'm watching Sister Wives from the beginning, as I like to say, while we wait for the end. Because the end is coming, although... Probably not as soon as people think. And, you know, Wednesdays I do my TLC talk, so I'll get into more drama, more tea in the past week from, um, you know, fallout from the Sister Wives returning to social media, you know, pretty much admitting they are going to film despite Garrison's passing. Anyhow, another show on Wednesdays. So episode six, let's get into this is the prelude to Cody and Robin getting married. We know at this point Cody and Robin are engaged. The Rob dog has moved to Utah with the family. And now we are picking out wedding dresses. We are cake tasting. We are menu tasting. And oh, by the way, Cody drops a bomb at the end of this episode on all the other women. So we start out the show kind of like we end the show, which is these confession not confessionals, but these... Well, they are confessionals, but it's so brilliant because these confessionals feature all the women and then sometimes Cody. So we open the show with already the women are setting up some tension and boy, can you feel it. Okay. So the first five episodes of this show, things were good. We love Robin. Yes, it's hard. Yes, there's going to be these jealous feelings bringing in a fourth wife, but we've signed up for this. Oh, but then... Oh, this see this episode six, you can see it. You can feel it. So the women are discussing how they do not think it's fair that Cody and Robin are spending nights together when they're not even married. And in fact, they do not find it fair that Robin is now getting a fourth night. Now, at this stage in this episode, I'm kind of like, well, ladies, you know he's going to marry her. He's married the three of you. What's the big deal? Like, I mean, she's going to get that fourth night, whether it's five weeks from now or tonight. So I actually kind of began to side with Robin on that one. But they're all, there's a little tension and Christine is like, I don't think it's right. She's saying that in front of Robin. That's the best part about these confessionals that, of course, <sighs> will never in a horse's hair ever happen again because none of them like each other and none of them are even married to each other anymore. But this is back when we got them all together and they had to say this shit to each other's faces. Yes, yes. All right, so we there's some tension about who, how and when Robin's going to spend time with Cody. And Robin's argument is, guys, I move my family across states. Uh, my children, you guys all came into these this marriage with Cody and then you guys had kids with him. You didn't bring in kids prior. That's been a big acclamation. I kind of am sort of Team Robin on this. I'm like, all right, so she she needs some extra time and security with Cody. At this point, if we didn't know what we knew about Cody and Robin, I actually would be Team Robin. And then they go flower shopping. So they go flower shopping, and again, Robin seems super cool. 
pick out any flowers you want. I want you women to feel included. I want you to feel uh, that this, you know, I don't want you to wear a design or a dress that you're not into. And so the women are picking out dresses and trying on dresses throughout the episode and flowers. And I got to say, I'm like, Robin, very mature of you, my, my friend, very mature of you. I did this with my own wedding. And actually, I have to say, I wondered if when you all watch this, if this made you think of your own weddings too. But I loved, this really for me reminded me of getting married and how much fun it was. And I never thought I would be that girl that was into getting married and cake testing and menu testing, but it is so much fun and so much joy in bringing your family and friends along. However, when I came to the wedding parties, Shvan and I both decided his brother was just going to stand up with him and my niece was going to stand up with me. So we wouldn't have these big wedding parties. There wouldn't be these big expectations of who's going to, how many bridesmaids. And we got married when I was 35, I think 35, 36. So, you know, a lot of our friends, they'd already had kids. It's a big ask for them to fly across the country, get babysitters. And then what are we going to say? You know, let's get, make you buy a thousand dollar dress and all these commitments. So we kept it simple and we really kept our, we wanted our wedding to be for our family. It was, it's probably the only time ever that all of your family members, your dearest friends, your siblings are all going to be in the same place for an entire day and night celebrating love and celebrating you. So we wanted them to have the best food, drink their faces off, you know, do whatever, party it up. And they really did. So I loved this episode because it made me, it reminded me of my own wedding experience, which was really, really great. So, uh, you know, they're having a ball at this point. Then they go cake tasting and everybody has opinions on the cake tasting. Oh my Lord. I mean, can you imagine when you go cake tasting for your own wedding, your mother has thoughts, your mother-in-law has thoughts to be, your husband has thoughts. I mean, the cake tastings, oh my God, everybody has their two cents. Now you got four wives and the Codemeister. Oh my God. So, and Mary and Robin are sitting there going, well, what do you think that the staff for the cake tasting thought of us? And Robin's like, I don't really give a shit. Okay. I'm like, I'm with you, Robin. Who cares? Mary's worried that they're going to think different things. And honestly, I was kind of with Mary. I do think the woman was like, didn't sign up for a bunch of polygamists today to be in her cake tasting, but uh, okay, not, uh, you know, not going to raise any red flags. They're paying. So I do think she was annoyed. Cody does this bizarre dance at the at the cake tasting which is so great I feel like it sets up his quirky personality and his moves to come his knife in the kidneys is one of the best lines of all time it was so good and then they'd all vote to, with their eyes closed to try to make it fair okay so the woman's like all right you each get two votes here let's go through it strawberry shortcake all right who wants that okay chocolate chocolate okay something with almond that like christine was absolutely like salivating at she was frothing at the mouth all the other women hated it cody was into it so and, and then they vote. And interestingly enough, Cody and Robin sort of vote on the same items. And everybody's sort of saying, okay, well, you know, did you peek? And Robin's like, no, that's why I kept my eyes closed so no one could accuse me of, you know, swaying Cody's opinion. And that is the moment, folks, to me, when the light switch goes on. And we begin to see a more territory. We start, and by the end of the episode, I got different thoughts about Robin. We start to see a more territorial Robin. And then, they, then they're then they going to the reception hall. They're looking at reception halls. They're going to taste the food. And it's, it's interesting because then they all reflect, meaning Mary, Janelle, Christine, on their own weddings with Cody. And Janelle's is the most poignant because Janelle lets us know as the audience that her family, she didn't grow up in polygamy, unlike Christine, right? Christine's like legacy polygamist. Mary, like Mary's people, I mean, they came over here in 1770-something, and they were taking 18 wives then, all right? And they just kept it going. So, but Janelle's family was not down. And so Janelle alludes to the fact that this experience with Robin of cake tasting and Robin's wedding and the joy around it, they're all living through that because none of them really had that amazing of a wedding experience with Cody. 
not because, you know, in Janelle's case, like her family didn't participate, it sounds like, much at all. I actually w- kind of wanted more from that scene. I would have liked to have heard more. Which family members objected? What were their objections? The perception? Cody? Mary? Christine? Like, what was the whole, what did they, I mean, I wouldn't have liked it. I'm going to be just honest. And, you know, a little bit Janelle's family turned out to be right. Now she's got beautiful children and she's BFFs with Christine and she has this hit television show and a lot of great things. But oi, you know, it didn't work so great with Cody. Um, so Robin wants, so Robin's like loving the venue and there's this outdoor perugula and she wants them to pole dance on it, which is kind of funny because then at Christine's wedding to David Woolley, she gives him a lap dance. So it seems like we started out this show with pole dancing, which is ironic given the crew, the group. And now we're, and, and the last thing we saw was like a lap dance to the David Woolmeister. Then they do the fo- food tasting, and that's when they start making a bunch of Cody jokes about sharing. And the woman's like, oh, I, I think I only have a little bit of this tuna tartare. And they're like, no worries. <laughs> We've had a lot of the same things in our mouths. Like, we're willing to pass this around. And you're like, what? This woman's like, what? And then they keep going. They're just like, oh, taste? Yeah, we can taste everything. Yeah, because we've been sharing each other's fluids. Like, I mean, they don't say that. <laughs> but they basically... But they go in, they go in, they go in, baby. They're like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You'd be surprised how much we share, all right? We share D, we share tuna tartare, you know, and we'll share a toilet paper square. You know, they really, they really kind of lean in on it. Um, And then they're, 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 they seem to be having a good time again, Okay. So the little bit of tension at the cake tasting seems to go out the window and Robin even makes a joke because they, they tell the producers, they tell us the audience, well, we like to play around with this whole idea that we're polygamous. We play with it. And so, um, they're, they're sitting there and they're having a good time and Robin goes, yeah, I don't get upset when people ask me because Cody could just be our gay best friend and Cody's face. Oh, he doesn't like a gay joke. Tell you what. He was just like, look, he never laughs. That to me, that's, see, that's where I couldn't marry a guy that can't laugh at my jokes. Couldn't do it. None of the women seem phased. He doesn't like the gay joke at all. And we sort of shift gears and then Janelle says, you know, things are in this ominous kind of foreshadowing that, well, Actually, I shouldn't say it's foreshadowing because that would be the other way. But in this bizarre moment, Janelle is saying, you know, everything's calming down. Everything's calming down. And that moment I loved because doesn't that remind you that we really don't know shit? That people think they're psychics and people – and yes, we all have some intuition that you should definitely tune in and listen to. But the reality is we really don't have any clue. Like None of them could have predicted in that moment how south it would go 14 years later on a, t- a TV show, you know? And in that, um, we see that, you know, Janelle says, I I think things are going to be okay. Things have really settled down. I I had a lot of apprehension about it, but now that Robin is here and we're having a good time, you know, I I think, I think things are going to be okay. And so we think, great, this is, this is looking really, really good. Then they go to try on wedding dresses. That's where things go south yet again. That's, and that's what I love about these 20-minute episodes. There's so much in it, you don't even pick up your phone to try to look for other shows to watch. It's amazing. Robin goes to try on wedding dresses. I'm going to get to that, but I'm going to thank a sponsor. Horizon Fibroids. Ladies, so many of you listening to this podcast episode may be battling fibroids because, in fact, 50% of – sorry, 80% of women will have a fibroid by the age of 50. That's where the 50 came in. Now, not every woman needs to be treated for fibroids, but if you have heavy periods, long periods, if you've dealt with infertility, and if you have heavy bleeding, you might be a candidate for something called uterine fibroid embolization. Reach out to Horizon Fibroids. Horizonfibroids.com has three locations in Maryland. They service so many patients in D.C., Maryland, Virginia, and in the Pennsylvania region as well. Dr. Will Neem is a top fibroid doctor in the country, and they accept almost all insurance. Go to horizonfibroids.com. So 
Robin tries on wedding dresses. She looks great. She's cute. She's young. They're giving their opinion. But then we find out in the confessional that she didn't pick any one of them. And within minutes, instead of like dragging this out that they normally do, uh, Cody says, teases, I've got, well, I've got a bomb to drop. I'm going to drop it here. And he's sort of prideful about it. He's prideful. He's excited about it. I'm going to drop a bomb. And then we go to commercial. Amazing commercial placement. Excellent. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm hooked. I'm like, oh my God, get, come on, come on, come on back, come on back. Come on back. I really love this. So we get back and Cody goes, actually, I, I want to tell you all something. I picked out Robin's wedding dress. And ladies, you could have heard a, and fellows and others, you could have heard a pin drop, honey, in that set. But what? The who and the what? And the women all say, excuse me? Excuse me? You didn't give a rip what dress... I had Janelle, Christine was saying that. Christine's the most shook. She's the most shooketh. And Mary are like, you didn't care at all. And you're telling us you two decided on your own accord to go to a wedding dress shop and to pick out Robin's wedding dress. And now you're telling us? And it's so upsetting that Christine goes, I need a minute. I need a minute. And Cody's like, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. And this is where I'm like, Dude, the, this is where you begin to see, I don't, Robin is so cold to the women in this scene, so cold to them. Cody is like, is trying to patch it over real quick with Christine, trying to put it on Christine. Like, why are you getting so upset? You don't have to do this. I'm with Christine. I would have taken a moment too. That's shocking. And that's the beginning of us seeing on camera what we now know, which is Cody and Robin have this connection and love that he didn't have with any of the other three. And Robin sits there. And and this is what I'm curious for you all, OG fans. So Christine comes back. They they kind of pan like the, the, the women are up, they're down, they're taking their time. And then we know they come back together on camera. And Robin says, I, I just... I told Cody, I did not think you ladies needed to know that information, that it should be kept between the two of us because I didn't want to upset you guys. And that is something that he didn't need to share. Now, of course, at this point, we are trying to land a hit TV show. And I've always say, if you're going to be on reality, who are you willing to sacrifice? Best friend, marriage, you know, you've got to, you have to, there has to be some sort of sacrifice because you've got to kind of betray people or you almost are like Robin and Giselle on RHOP where you make a pact and it's like, whatever we do, whatever we say, we're coming back together, you know? But I don't think they knew that in 2010. Reality TV was still in its infancy. Now in 2024, if you don't know that, (laughs) sweetheart, you live under a rock. So this is my question though is do we think, is is Cody such a blabber mouth that we do in fact think Robin said to him, don't, don't do this. I'm telling you this should be between us. And Cody just can't keep his mouth shut, so he does it. Or do we feel as though this is part of Cody's narcissism where it, and Robin almost feeds it or participates and knows that this is going to happen? Is, is Robin, because you see this so much now in current time. And her being like, I told Cody, you know, he, he fight for Mary to stay in the marriage. You know, and then, of course, you find out Cody has zero interest. So I don't know. Does Robin play both sides? Or is Robin up against somebody that she's in love with that just is like an uncontrollable narcissist that's just going to, you know, he's just going to say and do what he wants. And regard, he's madly in love with Robin. But regardless, he is going to... He's going to control the narrative and say what he wants to say. So then the interesting part about this episode is they do all come back together and try to repair the situation, which is great in marriages and kind of interesting that they did this. And again, at this point in the series, you're like, everyone's likable. Because Christine says very emotionally to Cody, well, she has this kind of famous line where she says, you know, women are... Every woman is a nightmare and is crazy, and every man's an idiot. And Cody's like, yeah, you're right, you're right. And, and the women are kind of laughing. And then she says to him, you know, I, you can be a better man. You can be a better man. I know you have it in you to communicate. And she's this soft voice, and she's looking him in the eyes. And he's looking at her, and he's like, yeah. And at first, he doesn't really say yes. And she's like, 
I want you to, can you step up? I am asking you to step up. And at first he's like, "Uh uh-huh, mm-hmm. And then he sort of says, ladies, is there any other requests? Because I'm saying yes right now. And then he does say yes to Christine, that he will work on it and he will step up. So I thought, well, that's, that was pretty bold of him back then. Certainly is convincing that, you know, may, he, he seems to recognize that it was a mistake telling them or picking out Robin's dress. They seem to come back to the table and they all seem to agree upon that. And he seems to say, yeah, I'll be a better man. I will be a better man. And they all, they're like, okay, great. And then we are going to be moving on to episode seven next week. Oh, Oh my God, I love it. All right, uh, jam-packed lineup this week on the Sarah Frazier Show. Tomorrow, my husband returns. Everybody likes Schman on it. Have you guys seen this crazy setting that Instagram sneakily did to us with the political season coming up? We're going to talk about that. Should pop culture uh, and celebrities be a pop culture podcasters? Myself, Kim Kardashian, should we be apologizing for participating in any of the Kate Middleton rumor mill or speculation now that we know she has cancer. We're going to talk about that. Wednesday is TLC Talk. Thursday is a recap of the Vanderpump Rules season 11 latest episode. And Friday is my makeup tutorial. Y'all been asking. So that'll be on my podcast with every single product I use if you want to recreate my daily eye look. It's one of the number one things I get asked. So I'm doing that in an AMA. All right. Bye, everybody. Love ya. Bye.